Hello everyone. Today I'll be speaking to you about robotic partial nephrectomy step by step and tips and tricks for complex tumors. Well, what makes a tumor complex is the patient factor like diabetes, hypertension, obesity, all this actually increases the fat addressability onto the tumor and the kidney, which can increase the complexity of the surgery. Further, patient-associated comorbidities factor can also lead to anesthesia-related and surgical-related risk. The second factor is vessels. The vascular anatomy plays a very key role, especially in partial nephrectomy, and the detailed vascular anatomy is essential to do any form of partial nephrectomy. Multiple vessels, early branching, all this can pose problem in dissection and Thick lymphatic around the vessels also can pose problem in dissecting them. Atherosclerotic vessels can result in difficult clamping and again can add to the complexity of the surgery. Today we'll be discussing more about the anatomical factor which makes a tumor complex, like a tumor which is lying on to the surface of the kidney or which are exophytic and polar, they are comparatively less much easier to, uh, to do as compared to tumor which are quite big and are closely related to the PCS system or to the hilum and tumor which are endophytic again pose a difficult surgical challenge. So what actually do you need to deal with them? You need instrument definitely if, if I'm talking about robotic we need robotic instruments Imaging definitely plays a very important role when we are doing partial nephrectomy and a good 3D reconstruction both of tumor and the vessels plays a very, very important role. Experience of the surgeon definitely without any doubt is one of the most important factor to do any form of surgery, whatever it may be. So coming to each one of them, instruments. If I'm talking about robotic surgery, definitely a robo is needed. Vascular clamp, usually I prefer scanlon clamps. I don't have any conflict of interest, but they are easier to apply and easier to remove. So uh, as compared to the normal small bulldog clamps. A drop in ultrasound is a blessing if we have, and especially if you are doing complex parcel, we can assess the margin. And especially in case of endophytic tumor, we can actually demarcate the tumor and plan our surgery very well. ICG system or the firefly system plays a very important role, especially if you are doing more and more of super selective clamping or in case if the angel is not available, we can clamp the vessel and see whether we have completely cut off the blood supply or not. Imaging plays a very important role in case of uh, partial nephrectomy and a good 3D reconstruction actually is a blessing. If you know the vascular anatomy, probably almost 25 to 30% of the job is well done. Going to the technical consideration, do we actually need partial? And if the answer is yes, we should always do or attempt partial and technology should not decide the form of treatment. Consent for conversion to open and radical nephrectomy should always be taken, however the easy the parcel may be. A good assistance, especially in robotic surgery, is a blessing. Definitely, it is also a great help in any other form of surgery. Stenting or RGC is surgeon's preference. I usually prefer stenting in all my complex cases. Use of technology like drop-in ultrasound or fire play plays a very important role when we are doing robotic surgery and warm ischemia time definitely plays a very important role when we are doing partial nephrectomy. But remember, even if we are increasing the warm ischemia time and we can save nephron by doing a partial, we should always do a partial irrespective of whatever the warm ischemia time it is. But we should always try to shorten the warm ischemia time. Vessel clamping, again, it depends on surgeon to surgeon preference. Usually I clamp only the arteries in most of my parcel, except for complex parcel where I also clamp vein, but I usually remove them very early once the inner layer is done. 
bolster and hemostatic agent usually i don't use any bolster or hemostatic agent for the last three years before i used to do suture my preferred sutures is 201 uh, 20 strata fix and for the inner layer and a 20 relock suture for the outer renography i usually prefer a continuous suture for my renography patients are usually placed in flank position and usually i don't use any bolster just similar to any transperitoneal nephrectomy basically right now i am using xi robo so i prefer a inline port placement but definitely it all depends the port placement depends on what system you are using if xi inline ports ports are well and good the first step in partial nephrectomy is colon mobilization and it should start from the line of tort adequate mobilization of colon is must on right hand side we should mobilize right from the hepatic flexor up to the iliac vessels and on the left hand side we should mobilize right from the spleen to the iliac vessels so that the spleen falls just like a open book traction on the bowel actually opens up the plane we can see the transparent plane here the traction on the bowel actually opens up the plane and it makes our dissection much much easier we can always leave the lower pole fat and which actually demarcate the ureter here once we lift we can see the ureter there so once that is done traction onto the ureter helps in dissecting the vessels gonadal actually can be dropped down especially when we are doing partial nephrectomy or radical nephrectomy and gonadal gonadal can be spared vessels both artery and vein should be individually dissected based on the angiography preoperative angiography again looping the vessel is again personal preference for complex parcel i usually prefer looping the vessels but it all is personal preference the next step in partial nephrectomy is tumor demarcation so once we have dissected the vessels we should remove the fat overlying the tumor and the gerota should be open all around the tumor for at least 1 to 2 cm so that we can see the normal parenchyma all around the tumor for 1 to 2 cm drop in ultrasound is very useful especially when we are doing dealing with endophytic tumor and scoring of tumor mark tumor helps because it serves two purpose one it helps us to tell ki we have dissected the tumor all around and gives us confidence second it also gives us a margin from where we can actually go about kidney should be mobilized completely depending on the uh, position of the tumor so once that is done the next step is tumor resection vessel should be clamped depending on the complexity of the surgery either artery or both use of sharp cut should be done and tumor should be resected all around and we should avoid using cord tray if needed we should err in opening err on the side of opening pcs if the tumor is close to the pcs and visual cues is very helpful when we are doing partial nephrectomy so the next step is inner uh, the renography usually i start with continuous suture for the inner renography where the medulla is sutured if any pcs system is open they are sutured individually the sutures are tied in this sliding clip technique and in continuous manner usually no bolster is used the outer layer renography is usually done with the help of 20 20 vlock suture it is again done in continuous method for most of my cases earlier earlier during my early period i used to use interrupted but now i have switched over to continuous suture once that is done the renography is completed we can remove the clamp and observe the kidney at least for 5 minutes and we can decrease the intraperitoneal pressure at that time to see for any bleeding this step is very very important in order to reduce any chances of post operative hemorrhage so coming to my case number 1 is a complex partial where we can see a tumor which is located on the anterior hilar lip of all the partial probably these are the easiest hilar tumor these are the easiest and we can see the tumor lies very close 
onto the anterior hilar lip. So the surgery starts with the colon mobilization. The colon should be adequately mobilized with blunt and sharp dissection. And with good traction, actually we can identify the right plane. The duodenum needs to be cauterized uh, medially well below. Once that is done, we can lift the lower pole of the fat of the kidney and we can identify the ureter there. And on right hand side, especially it is important uh, to drop the gonadal in order to prevent any inadvertent traction on the gonadal vessels. Once that is done, the hilar vessels are dissected individually. Both RP and veins should be dissected individually and we should always look for an extra artery. Once we have gone all around the vessels, then the next step is seeing the demarcating the tumor. The cherota over the tumor is opened and it is cut all around. We should have at least one to two centimeter of the uh, normal parenchymal margin. This tumor lies very close to the sinus fat. So the sinus fat was also dissected well. So once the scoring of the tumor is done, the artery and since the tumor lie very close to the hilum, both artery and veins were clamped. Tumor uh, is resected using sharp cut all around. A circumferential incision is given all around. And with the help of left hand, the tumor is lifted. Here, assistant plays a very important role in keeping the field clean so that he continuously sucks out the blood. Any small vessels which is entering the tumor can be individually clipped with the help of hemolog clip and can be cut. Traction is very important and visual cues are again very important to do partial nephrectomy. So once, once the tumor is resected completely, then the renography steps is started. So here we can see with the final part, a good traction is given and we can see the hilar fat there. Any small vessels which were seen were individually clipped here. And the next step start with renography. 3-0 statafix is used for the inner renography in a continuous manner. Any opening of PCS system was separately sutured. The next step is doing the outer enography. In this case, this is my early cases, I have used interrupted suture, but uh, interrupted suture. So once that is done, the vessels clamp are removed and hemostasis is seen for five minutes. If you are satisfied with the hemostasis, the gerota over the kidney can be closed. The next case is a large, around 4.4 centimeter upper pole tumor, which again lies very close to the hilar vessels. So again, the step starts with mobilization of the colon. The colon is mobilized all around and adequately. The peritoneum over the kidney is cut, a sharp and blunt dissection. The hilar vessels are dissected well all around individually. So once that is done, the tumor is demarcated. Here, since it is a very endophytic tumor, a drop in ultrasound will be really uh, useful. And in this case, we have seen. We can see the tumor entering the hilum. And so this kidney needs to be completely mobilized. Drop in ultrasound plays a very, very important role. And we can score or we can mark the mar boundary using that. Once the boundaries are known, they can be marked or scored properly all around. Then the vessels are clipped. Again, since it is a hilar tumor, both artery and vein are clipped. Once that is done, all around the marking, uh, the tumor is cut with the help of scissors. In, usually the resection starts from the closer margin, that is the margin which is nearer to you. A constant traction needs to be given with one hand onto the tumor so that we can see the plane uh, nicely. Sinus fat, near the sinus fat, the tumor can be peeled just like an enucleation. Any vessels which is entering the tumor can be individually clipped and cut. 
once the tumor is removed again the renorafi needs to be done the inner layer is usually done with the help of 20 strata fix and any pcs system if it is open they are individually sutured and closed the renorafi is done using sliding clip technique and hemolac sutures are used to for that so once that is done the outer layer is done using your in this case i have used interrupted suture vicryl but usually i prefer to use 20 vlock suture this is my older case where i have used uh, vicryl here we can see the hilar lip when we cannot approximate we can just run sutures over the lip and uh, and it also act as a hemostatic suture so once that is done we for complex tumor when the inner uh, renorafi is done we can always remove the venous clamp c for any venous suture once that is not there we can start the inner uh, the outer renorafi with the help of here in this case i have used intermittent suture 20 vicryl so so the clips are applied in a sliding clip technique and once we are through we can remove the arterial clamp and see for hemostasis once we are satisfied with the hemostasis the gerota over the kidney again can be closed so my third case is a 3 cm posterior hilar lip tumor again this tumor are probably one of the most complex tumor and many people actually prefer to do it retroperitoneal as well but since i am more comfortable doing a transperitoneal surgery i have been done this case also transperitoneally the basic steps remain same we need to dissect the bowel completely and once that is done the ureter needs to be under traction and we need to dissect all the vessels individually once that is done since this case is a posterior hilar tumor we need to flip the kidney completely dissection of the kidney can be done outside the gerota and once the kidney is flipped completely the gerota over the kidney can be open to identify the tumor we need to completely see the tumor all around which is very important and in this case we need to remove the sinus pad as well so once that is done the vessels can be individually clamped and again since it is a hilar tumor i have also clamped the vein as well so once that is done the resection of the tumor starts from the area which is nearer to us and again visual feedback plays a very very important role constant traction with the help of left hand is needed to dissect the tumor out any vessels which is entering the tumor can be individually clipped again and cut so once the tumor is removed the steps again the basic steps remain the same the inner layer renorafi is usually done using 20 strata fix by sliding clip technique any open pcs should be closed separately the outer renorafi is done using 20 vlock suture again in continuous method by sliding clip technique usually i don't prefer using any bolster or any other hemostatic agent the suture should be taken at least 1 cm apart and should be tightened a dimple which forms onto the kidney is a indirect evidence that it is tight enough and the suture should be pulled in the direction in which we have inserted to prevent any cut it is very important to take each and every bite including the capsule of the kidney otherwise cut through of the suture is very very common so once we are done with the renorafi we can take out the clamp and see for any bleeding if there is no bleeding and once we are satisfied the specimen can be back and removed 
the gerotas over the kidney is fixed to the lateral wall. So, what are the tips and tricks for doing complex tumors? We need good armatorium, that is, good instruments are a basic need to do any surgery. A good bedside assistant actually is blessing, especially when we are doing partial laparotomy. Stenting or RGC depends on personal choice. I usually prefer stenting in all my cases of uh, complex partial nephrectomy. We need to mobilize adequately. There should not be any compromise during mobilization, right from your bowel mobilization to kidney mobilization when we have to resect the tumor out. It is always better and easier to resect from the area which is near to us and we should have a wide base so that the closure is much easier. Defetting the kidney to have good exposure of the tumor is necessary and we should have at least one to two centimeter of margin all around of the normal kidney before we start resecting. Tumor near the hilum vein clamping may help in those cases. Finally, last but not the least, conversion to open is not a failure if deemed necessary. To do partial but just doing a radical for the sake of using the technology is not justified thank you thanks a lot